Hi, everybody. Um, cool. Um, happy to be here today to talk about uh, some stuff. So yeah, Doug mentioned that I'm going to talk about the crews. I'm also going to tackle other things uh, along the way, which I find important, you know, and things I discovered, you know, through the years as well. Um, so quickly, I don't know if, you know, if everybody was there last night, you know, but I grew up in the south of France. Um, I went to a school, um, an art school when I was 15 years old, you know, where I learned photography, illustration, architecture, and plenty of, you know, good stuff. Uh, then moved to Paris to work as an animator in the school called the, the Goblin School, you know, where I learned animation. Um, I got hired by Disney at the time. You guys hear me really well? Or is that okay? So got hired, you know, at Disney at the time, which I didn't like at all. Uh, you know, Disney was really, really pretentious, and uh, you know, they, you know, I don't know what happened with them, but they tried to make sure that you know, f after school, you know, you start from scratch again and all over, and you know, you have to make your way up, you know, to the mountains of animation, and it's going to be a long and painful journey. You know, not my philosophy. You know, for me, it always been a fun journey. You know, there's no way I wanted to get back from scratch. You know, so. Yeah, Disney wasn't too pleasant, you know, I say about two years over there, you know, worked on, um, um, what's the name of it? The Goofy Movie and the Back of Notre Dame. And uh, yeah, send them back my keys and I say, yeah, no, you know, for me. Um, and then something happened where my teachers from that particular animation school called me. He was opening a studio at the time, really small studio, really intimate, just five people. And I had the, the honor to be part of it. And life started for me at this point, you know, where suddenly I had to, when I started right away, uh, I remember I had to do uh, full on uh, commercials, uh, animated, uh, you know, by myself, like on, in, in charcoal, no, not in charcoal, in, um, how do you call that? In pastel. So I had to animate like one minute and a half of pastel, you know, with the people on the water swimming and, you know, and I, s I mean, it was dreadful the first three days. I was wondering why I left Disney. But, you know, it was because, you know, I had to, you know, reinvent myself and, you know, f suddenly I had, you know, they gave me real responsibility and trusting me and, um, and that's what I needed. And I didn't want anybody to hold my hand, you know, and wanted to make my own mistake, learn from scratch. Um, yeah, and the adventure, you know, started there, you know. So I recall, I mean, I have the best memories, I have to say, you know, from that, that, that school, you know, of doing things on my own and, you know, and putting my hand dirty and making a mistake, you know, that I needed to learn from it. And the philosophy of the studio was that, you know, we had to work on commercials uh, and we were saving almost half the money and putting it in a jar when the, mo the jar was full. Then, you know, we had the possibility to do our own quick, short, quick, you know, things that we wanted to create, you know, animation and everything. So I did. I did, a, uh, I did a series, you know, um, it's really silly, and I have an episode here, I don't know if you want to watch it. Yeah. It's pretty embarrassing, yeah. Ah, I was dreading that answer. <laughs> I hope it's not going to work out. But, um, so, you'll see, it's really, it's really silly, but it's really, it was really personal, and, you know, I just wanted to have fun, really, at the end. And it had to be cheap and quickly done, you know. Uh, that stuff was really well received, actually, by a channel in France called Canal Plus. You know, they like how irrelevant, irreverent, sorry, it was. <laughs> and they asked me to do 30 episodes of, you know, something really dumb like that. But you'll see, I mean, I, I did the voice, I did the music, I did the animation, you know, in background. Um, with another friend of mine, who were two of us on the show. Should I just, oh, come here. So the end is a, the moral of the story is you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't put your pants down. You know when you, you know. So I did a lot of small, stupid moral that you know you don't even want to show to your kid. You know otherwise I will do it. You know, but uh, that still make my kids laugh. You know nowadays, and that's the best thing you can get actually. Um, so I'm just showing you that because you know, even if I worked at Disney or those companies, I mean that was really the beginning, and I felt like even nowadays, you know, if, even if I have been working 
at DreamWorks for 18 years and went through a lot of different production. I always kept in mind, you know, the freedom I had, you know, when I did that and the energy. And I went through a lot of struggle at DreamWorks sometimes, you know, up and down, you know, working on production that didn't fit me with people that are not al always, you know, the best suiting for you. And in the back of my mind, I was trying to, you know, to think back and say, you know, I, I, you know, I did that and it was fun and people liked it. So, you know, um, it's good to come back to stuff like that, stuff that, you know, that, that are the origins of what you do the job and what you choose that craft, you know. Cool. Um, then, you know, get hired at uh, DreamWorks. In 96, you know, worked as a layout artist, you know, doing those big graphite drawings for Prince of Egypt at the beginning. Um, worked on um, a lot of different movies, maybe two, 12, 13, 14 movies. Uh, Make my way up, and that's the good thing about America, they trust you, don't. they trust you, and if you do well for them, you know, they give you more power, which is lovely, because more power means more freedom for me, that means I can do whatever I want. Uh, so eventually I can do a movie about those people, like showing the, the goodies, you know, to be cool. Um, Cool, and uh, so the latest one I know I did was uh, being production designer on The Crude, um, which was a great experience for me because I could be uh, quite flexible with uh, what I wanted, you know. I was working closely with Chris Sanders, uh, who worked on Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon. Um, and um, yeah, give me the task to do the production design for the movie. So here we are. This is, uh, so what I do when I start a movie, and by the way, it has to be, you know, really, really, uh, if you guys have questions on the way, just ask me as well, you know. What I'm showing you is really the real stuff, meaning that like it's exactly what I did when I started the movie, you know, every single thing I'm showing you is not an after thing, try to be pretty or, you know, fancy, and it's not, it's actually quite dirty. So, uh, yeah, ask me question. you know, let's go with it. So I do start with a style guide. So what a style guide is, you know, is actually all of my limitation for a movie, meaning that, you know, it's overwhelming when you work on the, you know, you get the script and you're like, you know, where should I start? You know, there's so many possibilities, so many routes I can take, you know, and I usually um, try to be concise about, you know, my limitation. So what kind of movie I'm going to make according to the story? So I read the story and the first thing I do ask is what is the theme of the movie? Okay. Um, what do we have at next one? Yeah. You know, so I asked the director, I said, what is the theme of the movie? What is it? What is it about? You know, I don't need to know the full story. You know, the story is going to change and evolve, you know, through the years, you know. But you know, just give me a theme. And the theme he gave me was a family that grows together, stays together. This is really important. And I will eventually get back, you know, at the end of the lecture, you know, talking about how to train your dragon and talking about the theme. Uh, it's a, a really important topic. But... Um, a theme compared to a log line. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Log line, which, which, which uh, would be what you read in newspapers about what the movie is all about, you know, but in, in this form. Meaning that, for example, if I take, um, I don't know if you're familiar with that movie called Ali I mean, Alien 2. Everybody saw Aliens, but the Alien 2 from James Cameron was, some people like it, some, pe some people didn't, you know. But um, if you were, you would read, you know, that movie in the tabloids, you know, you would read that you know, like uh, the army, you know, comes back to a planet because, you know, all the terraformers were on the planet, you know, disappeared. So, you know, they, they, they're here and the big battle, you know, will happen between aliens and, you know, and the army. And so that will be what you read in the, in the tabloid. That's called the log line, actually. It's a quick synopsis, you know, of the content of the movie. The theme of the movie is actually completely different. The theme of um, Aliens 2 is uh, motherhood, meaning that it's a uh, replay is it too loud? Okay. Replay, which is the main character on the show, you know, becomes a mom. Actually, she finds a little girl and uh, an orphan, you know, and she becomes a mom herself. You know, and that's something, you know, I want you guys to really think about. Okay, so this is the theme of the movie. Cool. And what I do after that is, you know, I just put some words. I talked with the directors and quickly, you know, I, 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 you know, I put words of what I imagine for the movie. So for this one, you know, you know, Earth is still a new planet, it's volatile as it grows, Mother Nature is exploring all the possibility. The world is looking for itself, experimenting, acting like a teenager, awkward, exciting, playful, organic. I'm just throwing a lot of different adjectives, you know. That's what I call the exposition, you know. Again, this is really important, you know. Exposition is what you 
you would see at the beginning of a movie. Is th those are the rules of the movie. What kind of movie are you going to watch? You know, and usually a movie starts with an exposition. Um, there was one of my uh, old cinematographer one day told me, you know, give us a test and told you know. So we watched the movie. I think it was with Brad Pitt and and other actress. And you know, you see them at the at the bar, like drinking a coffee. You know, and this is not the beginning of the movie. It's just you know during the movie. And you know, the, the, the teacher you know told us you know what. How would you feel different about that scene? You know what would be the exposition, like a different exposition of a movie for you to feel different about those two characters, you know. So you look at them, they have a coffee, you know, they really have a good time. It's Brad Pitt with another girl. And when you see the, the exposition of the, the movie, meaning the beginning of the movie, the, you see that that character, Brad Pitt, is actually raping a, a woman and is really violent with women, you know. Therefore, you know, if you expose the movie with that content, you know that every time you see Brad Pitt with a woman, you're going to freak out, you know, y all along for 90 minutes, you know. Exposition is really crucial because it gives you the rules, you know, of of your of your show. Um, so, you know, again, you know, I was really um, trying to figure out, you know, what the exposition will be. So, again, you sell the rules of the show. Influences, you know, um, I took a. I'm not going to spend too much time, by the way, going through the style guide, you know, because it's really data oriented and. and but you know, I picked like one uh, anime, one um, illustrator that I really like from uh, Argentina. His name is Carlos Linné. Maybe some of you are familiar with him. Uh, I really like his style. You know, it's really organic to the to the point where it's actually pretty abstract. Uh, he, he also he plays a lot with shapes and um, and balance and whimsical and organic. And I felt like that language, you know, itself was great for Cruz because Cruz, when I read the story, uh, there was no foes, there was no nemesis into the show, you know, the world itself uh, was changing all the time. And we decided that the, then the world will be, um, will be the bad guy into the movie. Therefore, the world had to be designed in order to surprise the audience constantly, meaning that, he, you know, you could hide an animal in it and the animal could, you know, jump at you, you know, anytime. So we didn't want any straight line. We wanted to feel like the nature is completely is involving constantly. Uh, acting like a teenager a bit, you know, so that style, you know, felt really good for, for, for me. You know, more drawings, you know, maybe a bit blurry for, for you guys, but I picked actually the most abstract drawing from him, you know, but for me, there's no laser. Is there any laser on that? Or? No, there's no, okay. Like on the, that, that page on the bottom, for example, the number C, you know, it's a weird shape thing, but I used it as a palm tree, you know, I created a palm tree out of that shape after a while. You know, I, you know, then I break down those drawings. I explain why, you know, it's, you know, it's really useful, and, you know, so shape influence, you know, organic shape, thick and thin, busy, and clear, and even size, playful shape. You know, I just put stuff that are important for me that will be important for the show. So far, it shouldn't make any sense, you know, but little by little, for me, it makes sense, and for the crew as well, you know. I look at more influences, you know, and des describe, you know, why those are working. And again, that is, a, you know, I repeat myself here, but it's just because, you know, I, at the beginning, I don't know what direction I, sh I can take. So doing that stuff, you know, just narrowing down the choices. And when we work on a movie like Cruise, you know, there's about maybe, uh, what, 700, maybe 800 people who are going to work on the movie afterward. You know, those people are coming from other movies. They're also coming from other countries, you know, with different culture. And I make sure that that style is bringing everybody together. Then my task as a production designer at one point is not really to, to draw or paint, you know, but it's to keep everybody on the same track, making sure that they don't drift, you know, like the style is really consistent. Uh, cool, then I, um, then I started to do some really quick doodle, you know, like taking those rules that I learned from the, the previous artists, you know, then I just draw some shape, then more shape. Um, then here already I'm setting up, you know, again, uh, rules that I'm going to use along the movie. For example, those natural bridges, negative space. And I don't know if you see, but there's always like a big boulder. There's always a big thing that's going to take room in the, in the, in the screen, you know, like there's always something that takes about 50% or 40% of the screen. Um, and that is to make the point, you know, it's to make the point that it's a Jurassic time, there's big elements that are bigger than the, the human themselves, you know. Um, and 
I'm going to use that you know, tremendously on the show. Uh, then I went to a, a, a garden, like a botanical garden. Like you, you know, you guys have a beautiful one, by the way. I went on Sunday, it's just brilliant. And I felt I invented everything, you know, but you know, suddenly you see that God invented everything already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, cool. I jump on layout and composition after. You know, I took a graphic novel from France that I quite like. I explained, you know, the rules of composition as well. You know, and for example, the first one is called perspective. You know, uh, you know using the crane. I mean, using uh, making sure that we not always on the floor. For example, that the, the, the camera can crane up and down. You know, give him a lot of freedom. Um, and that is just because again, the 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 world is. The bad guy. The world is, you know, moving all the time. You know, so it's not really an easy place to live. You know, the the the, the phenomen the phenom the phenomenon of Pangaea is going to occur where the continents are drifting and breaking. So I wanted a lot of up and down. I didn't want the camera to be always on the floor. Therefore, for example, even the second image, you know, it's not too clear, but there's three different layer. You know, like the girl is on the second one. There's people passing by on, on underneath her, and again, it's to make sure that since the family also was disconnected on cruise. You know, I was wondering, you know, maybe they're actually not on the same plane all the time. Maybe they're actually working on a different plane. You know, and little by little, when they get more connected towards the end, you know, they, you know, they will be on the same plane, you know. Um, so just ideas like that. The third one is a um, line of action. Um, so it's horizontal against vertical line, tilt of camera, you know, to give more energy in your composition. Again, I didn't create that, you know, but I found it and I, th I felt it was really relevant. Third one, the fourth one, you know, again, you see those two girls, you know. Again, they're not on the same plane, they have that dialogue. And to be honest with you, I was just tired, tired of those movies where the camera is always on the floor, always following, you know, my character, and the camera was going from one to another. You know, so I said, why not that? Why not, you know, one, you know, like Eve, for example, she's a teenager, you know, she can be on a branch, you know, and the branch can be on the bottom, they yell at her, you know, she has to come back. And we did use that, by the way, you know, so. Again, my task is not just following the script, you know. I, I I'm here to embellish the script to make sure that I enhance the script, you know, with a visual statement. Those are doing the task, you know. Uh, fifth image, you see again that uh, so it's a, it's a screen division. Um, so we have a, we create a lot of optic optical division when we work on movies, you know. So horizontal line, vertical lines. You know. This one um, has a division by the middle, as you can see on the bottom. And actually, the point of that is you, you are the one who are driving where, the eye, where your eyes want to go, OK? Um, so you know, second row, quite the same. I'm not going to go you know, through everything again, but those are really helping me tremendously you know, through, the, through the movie. And honestly, you know, the, the movie lasted five years. I used that Bible, even myself, you know, for five years. I was getting back to it, and oh, yeah, that's true. You know, I put that. For, you know, in the first place, you know, I forgot about it. Uh, like chaos, we used it. Chaos, for example, in that image on the, the fourth image, you see those rocks. They're really organic. You see those two girls jumping from one rock to rock. Uh, I called it chaos because it was, you know, what if you know animals are hiding, for example? They would be there and you don't see them, you know, unless you know they move. Like those girls, it's a still, so you barely see them. But if they were moving, then you would spot them. You know, and we did that on the cruise. You know, we had like the tiger at one point who's hiding basically just behind the characters. You know, he's among the leaves, you know, and you don't see him. I mean, I hope you didn't see him. And uh, then when he moves, you know, suddenly you pick him, you pick the movement, you know, and you follow him, you know, you're tracking down. So just a lot of different small rules that, you know, that are great to work with, you know. Line of action on the fifth one and division in the middle again. More example from sci-fi. I usually don't dig too much into sci-fi. But again, since it had to be really giant and the world breaking all over the map, you know, I looked a lot of sci-fi stuff, you know, more sci-fi, really cool images. You know, then I look at nature. We also did a trip in Zion, you know, just for reference of material, texture, layout, you know, we took a lot of pictures, you know, so there's some image from, from that Zion trip, like the one on top that I use, the one on the bottom as well. You see the big boulder again? Repeat myself. Uh, something I use constantly as well is uh, what I call like um, I create all of those words and I don't even remember after. But it's like a um, perspective, perspective reverse. I mean, 
you know, were reversed, the clues of perspective, meaning that you know, everything that's further from, from, from the camera is bigger than what you have on the front, you know. So usually it's the opposite, you know. The further you, I mean, you see a tree on the front, you see a tree on the back, the tree on the back is, is smaller, you know. I did the opposite, you know. So the stuff on the front is smaller, the stuff on the back is bigger. Because of the psychology and how, how it works, you know, then suddenly it gives you a different clues and it gives you a clues of, of scale that is like hundreds times bigger, you know, uh, that, it, that, it, that it is, you know. Um, so I use that a lot, you know, all the trees on the back are bigger, the cliff on the back are bigger. Therefore, like that image on the bottom, you see the cliff right here, uh, you know, taking the full frame on the back, you know, like it could have been a blue sky and, you know, but not the cliff, just give you suddenly a, a sense of scale, um, which was something, again, we used a lot. Do you have questions so far? No? Okay. Uh, natural bridge on the bottom. And those, again, it was like to create different pathway. Again, you know, I didn't want everybody to be on the floor. So, you know, the second image, you know, this is maybe a path they're taking, you know, just down the, you know, the third one as well. You know, it can be really, uh, they're going through mountains and it's a tough path to go, you know. The one on the bottom, division, optical vision, optical division on the, in the middle. And um, I created an image, you know, with that reference, by the way, after. Okay. Uh, that's the first piece we did. Uh, this piece combines together many of the properties described earlier. Landscape is grand, spacious, organic, playful, dangerous. So again, all those words, that, uh, those adjectives that I used at the beginning, then, you know, I need to show it to the directors at this point, you know, it's just not words, you know. So uh, we create a piece that, you know, group that together. It's a made-up world, the trees and vegetation are foreign, bizarre. It's a huge, there's a huge monolith dividing the composition in the middle. Characters are overwhelmed by nature. There's a void around them where they can fall into. The world is generous. Different landmarks are colliding with each other. Tree, rocks, ocean, waterfall, glacier, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, so that was a good image for me because I was like, yeah, it's working. I mean, at least it's working for me, you know. <laughs> Trying to, you know, because, you, you know, it's an exploration field. I mean, I, I do it and I'm not too sure where it's going to go. Cool. And then, you know, we rock and roll, you know. So at this point, I have a bigger team. Uh, maybe like what? At the beginning of maybe six, seven, eight people at the max is, get, is getting way tighter afterwards, you know, when we go into the meet, and I'll show you the meet after. But at this point, I have, you know, some artists, you know, give them all the rules, you know, show them all the style guide. You know, we take the script, you know, we break down the script, you know, I tell them there's some moment we should illustrate that will be cool, and some moment we can just um, have fun with, you know, uh, that are not in the story. But it doesn't matter because our task is to do the visual, not the story. Uh, you know, so the world is on steroid, I mean, blah, 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 blah. More image. You see, there was that image on the bottom is actually one of the photo reference I used before. And, you know, instead of, uh, there was a log crossing the, the, the river, you know, and I was imagining that maybe it's a giraffe, you know, th so they're using nature as well, you know, to stay playful. You know, I'm sorry, I'm showing all of the secrets. I mean, it <laughs> Uh, cool, more stuff. The one over there on the bottom again is that image I just show you, you know. And again, it's for me. Again, I'm repeating myself constantly. But it was maybe they have a dialogue on a. Again, it's not on the plane. It's not on the, on the ground, or you know, they can have a dialogue on the top of a, an animal crossing different landmark. You know, why not? Why not? And let's see what stick as well. You know, big boulder over there, reverse perspective. You know, the the, the waterfall on the back. You see, takes the full room, you know, so it's bigger. I could have, you know, done like smaller waterfall, you know, but no, no, we decided that it was bigger on the back. You know, that's something else. Again, you know, so we did that image as well, which was great, you know. When we did that image, I felt like, yeah, this is cruise, you know, we, we are there. We arrived where the look, you know, should, should, should be. Uh, this scary forest, you know, feels grand and overpowering. The shapes are unfamiliar, organic and twisted. However strange, we should still feel we are on planet Earth, not an alien world. So that was something we just had to avoid, you know, is to, be, to make sure that it was always on planet Earth. The ground is uneven, there's all speed danger, and uh, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I felt really good about this one, you know. Um, cool, what else do I have here? Oh, yeah, I did this one after. You know, again, to, to, you know, to hammer the same, same rules. Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Okay, so that was my style guide. Question on the style guide? Um, yeah. Of course, we have the straight line. For the curved lines of the rivers, we have certain limits to respect in order of the rule. The curve can be broader than a certain amount. You know, we have just straight lines and curves, but the curves are just limited. Mm -hmm. So, did you have some mathematical uh, thing? No, I'm not sure. No. No, you know, the, so the, the, that language that you're talking about, you know, Jason might talk about it a bit more, you know, definitely like the, the, curb and the, the curves and straight line is something really relevant in uh, animation. We work a lot, you know, with the, like, you know, the curve that you're going to do here, you know, you know against the, the, the straight line, you know, maybe Kendall, you know, we'll talk about it for Madagascar. That's something that we use constantly, you know, those opposition of lines, you know, not that much on, 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 on that particular movie. Because actually, I make sure that everything was pretty curvy, constantly to, in this round. You, know, you can turn around, it's pretty volumetric, you know, so no straight line. Straight line was actually part of the rules, you know, no, no straight line. Good question. Though. Um, cool, so I'm showing you, um, for people who haven't seen the movie, which is, I hope everybody saw it. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But uh, this is, um, so this is a sequence that we did in the movie, and I'm just going to play that sequence really quickly. And I'm going to explain, I'm just going to break it down and told you exactly where we started and the ups and downs to the, the, the thing. Um, there we go. One thing's for sure, we can't go back the way we came. Sandy? What is it? Hey, no, 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 wait! Come back, Sandy! We can't be out in the open like this. We need a cave. Now, step where I step. Nothing big knows we're here yet. Wait. Okay. Wait. Okay. Wait. Wait. the exact same cave? I mean, if, okay, if it was me, if it was me, I'm just throwing this out there, if it was me choosing the cave, I would go with a smaller cave. Wait. Dad? I'll take care of this.
Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Hey, look, this cave has a tongue. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. That wasn't the final product, by the way. That was before color timing and, you know, um, so we do, yeah, color timing at the end. Uh, okay, so um, how do we do that? I mean, you know, <laughs> and um, hold on, what is my first slide? Let me see. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a first, it's a web page. Because we, now we all do, you know, we have something in common right now. We all start with a blank page. Um, and it's really what it is. I mean, you know, we have a blank page and we have to fill it with the right drawings. Um, so for that particular sequence, for example, I knew, it's a bit selfish, but I knew I wanted something in the, in the jungle. It wasn't specifically in the, in the script, by the way, but I felt like, yeah, something will have to happen in the jungle and we'll see in the story where, when it will be. Um, so right away, you know, I, I designed the jungle. I really wanted to have weird plants and, and everything, you know. So, um, you know, so blank page first. Then, you know, you saw those doodles, you know. Those doodles were done really early for the style of the show. But um, at the beginning, you know, I didn't know too much about the story, by the way, you know, which shouldn't happen. You know, you should have your script really tight, but it's not always the case. So what do you do? You know, you make yourself busy. and. I made the team busy as well. So I created the plants, more plants, a bit more sophisticated ones, you know. Sorry, come back to this one quickly. Uh, and I do that even before actually looking at photo reference. Usually I always, you know, go to a coffee place and Melbourne has many of them, so you don't have any excuses. And, you know, I just take my sketchbook and I do all stuff, you know, for my head, even if it's not good or if it's not you know too detailed or precise at this point it's good enough for me to put me on track of what i want to to achieve you know then i go to references you know and then i you know i found stuff that are great for the show you know weird images like that you know uh, lichens and you know trees growing on the, on the on the dead tree as well you know to show that the time has passed by and uh, you know uh, giant roots where you can actually run underneath, you know, so we had, you know, cool stuff. And even macro, we, we, we did a lot of macro as well in order to really surprise ourselves, you know, instead of looking at the giant stuff, you know, then we looked at, we, you know, just really weird and fun, you know, thing. And the advantage of doing that is, uh, you know, there's something cartoony about it. You know, those cacti, for example, those, you know, uh, dry tolerant uh, plants, have something really, really cartoony that was great for the style of the show. Sam. Weird, even weirder plant, you know. And so, you know, we're doing it. We're using that plant that I show you. And, um, and you know, we make up something with it, you know. So again, they don't have too much story. So at this point, you know, I make plants. You know, we decided to make plants. You know, then we do the breakdown of the plants, you know, for the, the, the texture, the materials, um, all the color, you know, everything, you know. Again, don't know too much about the content, but it doesn't matter because I, I want the team to be busy and I want to make sure that I create enough asset for the, the show that I can place later. So I'm creating a bank, creating a bank of images of trees, plants and everything, but especially for crudes, you know, because it's relevant, you know, to the show. And I don't, everybody was asking me all the time, you know, but I, I need to build that, but for, for, for what? I mean, for which sequence? I'm like, don't worry, we'll see that after, you know. Uh, so we filled our drawers, you know, with a lot of plan that we did. Another one. And then uh, we started. Um, so reading the script, you know, uh, then I learned that uh, they live in the first act in a really desolated desol area, really desertic. Uh, then something occur, you know, they are, they have to jump on a new world that they don't know anything about. And what is that new world? So we decided that the jungle would be a, new a good place for that because on the opposition of the desert, you know, where we sell, where we show a lot of uh, yellow and dry color and bleach sky, you know, then if they jump into the, you know, the, 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 the jungle after 15, 20 minutes of screening, then we can make a bold statement, you know, going to green suddenly and your eyes were trained to look at yellow and then, you know, uh, suddenly I'm, I, I give you green on your eyes, you know. 
blue and green and everything. So that's why, you know, it's a good rule. It seems to work, yeah. Uh, so we decided, we, de we decided to design here, you know, them uh, going down. And then we went even like lower, you know, like I, I, I imagine that, you know, what if they actually go, it's not even the jungle, it's actually like the world is an organism on its own, you know, and they go on the guts, you know, like on the, on, on the belly of the, of the world. So suddenly everything that was above them, like clouds and everything, now, ev no, 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 the, the, on the desert, the first act, there was no weather whatsoever. I didn't want to do any weather, save that for later. The sky completely bleached out. There was no lot of element. There was no, nothing to look at. It was really boring. You know, when they jump, then they fell into that, uh, that, that place where everything is above them. You know, so you have the, those giant tree and organism and, you know, weird stuff, you know, like they're in the middle of the stomach of planet Earth. You know, and it was good. I felt good about it. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. So, we, we, you know, again, you know, I'm introducing green and blue. You know, I do my color script and I'm really happy about it. You know, um, then the directors told me, oh, yeah, we forgot to tell you there's a creature living there. It's, uh, you know, it's um, that creature. I don't remember the name. Um, whatever. Uh, you know, so they tell me it's going to live there. So, you know, I'm putting it here. You know, I'm following the script a tiny bit. And of course, the story changes under my feet. And that happens constantly, by the way. And that creature will live somewhere else. No, I think so. They told me, you know, oh yeah, it's a different creature living there. So I do a different creature. Then they told me, oh no, it's a whale. You know, <laughs> I forgot to tell you, it's not, a, it's actually a whale. It's a walking whale, which is really funny. It's great. You know, it's living in the jungle. So I'm like, really in the jungle, the whale? You know? <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going to put it, you know. But that's fine. We can do it. We get paid good money. So we can, uh, <laughs> we can put the whale somewhere. <laughs> You know, so we hide the well, you know, there's a bit well, you know, they're supposed to be in the well, like you saw on the, on the stuff. Cool, we do that. You know, we do the breakdown and everything, you know. What is that? Um, yeah, so what I do usually, again, you know, I'm not waiting for the story all the time. I'm not waiting to tell me, for the directors to tell me, you know, yes, you know, this is now, you know, we have the story ready, you know, you start to build things, you know. So, you know, we dive deep into, you know, the drawings and everything, and then we even model, you know, the modeling nowadays is really an, an extension of uh, the art department, you know, so, you know, when I've, again, we built a lot of different plants, uh, I did those doodles, you know, go down to the modeling department, you know, and, you know, really organic way, you know, we start to build, you know, some really rough set. Put the scale. You know, and again, the idea is again that organism, you know, so. That's what I, we sell, we sell them. Do that stuff. I put atmosphere as well to make sure, you know, the layering, how it works and, you know, uh, for that particular place, you know, again, since I didn't know too much about it, I built five different sets. You know, one where there's a lot of void, you know, um, uh, one where you're under the organism. This one's actually a giant forest, you know, so the trees are even bigger. And we didn't end up to use it for that particular sequence. But it's fine, you know, it was training for us and, um, and we actually used it at the end of the movie. So I don't know if you guys recall, but at the end of the movie, they run on the beach and just before the beach, actually, they come from a forest. And so I used this one. I just replaced the floor, you know, with, with sand. So it, it, it wasn't wasted at the, at the end, you know. And I put a quick camera. You know, again, this is really crude. Haha, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Um, and just put a quick camera from, you know, again, it's more like reality check, making sure that it's working. I usually even, when I do, um, when I do longer cameras like that, I even put a quick music on top, you know, like that. It's actually, it, it does help to sell, the, to sell it. So you put music and suddenly it feels real, like, it feels like, you know, you sing the, the movie before everybody else. I did another really quick one for space. You see, nothing fancy, you know, but uh, at least I can gauge the scale at this point already, you know. The branch that you see on the bottom here, that's the set we pick, you know, when they're traveling on top of the branch and you see the stuff flying and, you know. So when I do that, um, after I work, I try to work uh, tightly with uh, the layout artist, so the camera, the cinematographer. And we, you know, we go into the set and we just pick places. 
And it's a big battle here because, you know, usually the cinematographer does whatever he wants. And he's like, oh, I'm going to shoot right here, you know. And I'm like, no, I'm, you know, there's no way you're going to shoot here. I didn't build anything over there, you know. So just shoot where I, you know, where I put my plants and everything, you know. Don't try to be <laughs> cocky. But that happens all the time. And I'm crudes too. I make sure that that won't happen, you know. <laughs> they need to shoot where I tell them to shoot. <laughs> Yeah, good luck, yeah. And what do they tell me? Yeah, suddenly I'm learning, I'm learning something. That the, um, done. Yeah, that the well is not in the jungle. The well is outside the jungle. You know, so they write the script like that. So I'm like, okay, so I, <laughs> so quickly, you know, I go back to the previous one, you know. So I have to, you know, since, again, we got really busy all along the show, you know, created, you know, uh, background and everything, and I, we had one in a drawer. We pulled one drawer, we have that background that we did, you know, where they were working on, on that um, swamp. And I'm like, yeah, that would be cool, you know, they're going out of the forest where it was green, you know, now I'm introducing a new color, you know, and I like working by color like that, you know, we have the blue sequence and the green sequence. Stuff really basic, you know, but that just helped the audience as well to notice that you're moving ahead. The, the movie was a journey, so you cannot come back almost to the color that you were pre previously, otherwise, you feel like you have turned around, you know. So that rusty color, you know, ochre, rusty color, will be great right after. You know, therefore, we're using that color. They want the well outside, fine, and put the well outside, you know. And then I have to modify my set, you know. Now I have to create, you know, that quick, you know, that quick set, you know, that it's really, you know, doesn't look like nothing, you know, because of, of, course, of course, there's no texture. But, uh, you know, this is a really, uh, really bold, uh, down and dirty stuff, and the jungle over there, you know. But you see, I mean, it's really to show you as well that, you know, even at DreamWorks, you know, it's a big company, we, you know, we are looking for stuff as well. It's, nothing is really settled in stone, and, you know, it's really an organic process to work, you know. What really was, and this is why it's important to have your style guide ready, because you can do whatever, you can change whatever you want almost, you know, as long as your rules, your exposition, you know, all of that is always there, you know. Then you can you can move stuff around, you know, and um, I think hold on, let me check where we are quickly. Yeah, something happened here. Then I'm learning, so I'm showing all of that to the company, and the company is not on the same page as I am. There's nobody, right, from DreamWorks? Yeah. It's good. <laughs> they actually, and this is true. They they tell me, you know, the not the directors, but beyond the directors, you know, they said, oh, it would be cool but when they fall into that that place, you know, from where they are in the first act. Then it's actually the, it's the word of Oz. It's super colorful. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. That's not what I understood when I read the script, you know. I read the script, and on the script, it was like, they're really familiar with the first act where they live forever on the, that desert area. They fall into a place they don't know anything about. You know, therefore, it has to be um, intimidating for them. They don't know anything about it. They're touching texture that they haven't touched before, you know, the colors that they haven't they're not familiar with. The father is really conservative already in the first place. He's going to be even more scared in the second, you know, when they fall into that pit. So that doesn't make sense. But I don't have all the choices and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not on top. So they tell me, yes, no, it has to be colorful. You know, I say, so you don't like the, you know, really misty, moody and everything? And I say, eh, no. <laughs> Damn it. So, um, so it's, you know, it's tricky, you know. Um, then I'm adding colors, you know. I take that, that the stuff that I really like, and I, you know, I'm just putting colors. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's still beautiful. Yeah, are you sure? It's still beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I need that, you know. I see the purity in the, the, the limited palette, mm -hmm. but I know the suffering. But well, it, it was suffering. I mean, it's frustrating, and you want to leave the company, but you don't know where to go. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> so you know, I kept going, and. Um, Okay, so I tinted that image, you know, fortunately Photoshop can do stuff like that, you know, if you press the right button. You know, we did stuff like that as well. This one, and I was like, you know, oh, it's over, okay, I don't like it. Um, you know, it's feel, it feels tinted. It feels like those black and white pictures that people being brought back, you know, in the 60s, and suddenly they discovered that you can put ink on top of it and it becomes a color photo, you know, but you see the black underneath. Didn't like it at all. Um, so we're back on the board, you know, we're back in the, in, the, in, the, in the drawing board at this point, you know. So, and I was, and I'm really stubborn, so I'm like, okay, they want colors, you know, but the script is still the same script, you know, it's still pretty mystery down there, you know, we have to keep that alive, I mean, 
cannot escape, so I'm back on the boarding board, on the, on the drawing board, and they want color. So I'm looking at colorful stuff. More colorful stuff. Even really colorful. Then, ta -da, I ran into something. Um, I ran into this one. It's a bad image. I mean, you know, you don't see. But I ran into this one. I'm like, oh, hold on here. There's something really cool here. You know, that's okay. It's happening in front of my eyes. There's a lot of color, but it's on the water. <coughs> Therefore, you cannot see far, you know, because of the pressure of the water and the depth of the water. You know, so, you know, by like 10 meters beyond that, that pressure of water, you know, you, you, you shouldn't see really well. And it's like a fog, basically like the fog we put in the first place, you know. But there's colors, you know, so everybody should be happy. You know, and look at more stuff on the water, you know, like those swamps, you know. So not too deep into water, you know, but like just two, three meters just on the water. You know, uh, the animal is really colorful because it's right front of where the beam of light is, you know, therefore it gets all the color from, from the light. Where the light doesn't hit, then therefore it's in shadow or it's, you know. Um, and there's, you know, there's still like a density in the, in the, in the water that I can simulate, you know. Is it five or ten minutes? Ten minutes? Okay, I'm accelerating. I won't talk about everything I wanted to talk about, that's fine. This one was great, you know, I felt like, you know, this is it. You know, the, again, the light goes through the water, eats the coral or whatever those plants are, you know. And in the shadow, it's really misty, you know, like it gets really blurry, therefore really mysterious around it, you know. And I felt really good. I'm like, you know, yeah, you know, we find a compromise, you know, even if I hate compromises, this is a, maybe the right compromise. And maybe the, actually the movie is going to get better because of that. And then we jump back in the drawing board and, you know, we take the model, we take some frame in the model, we apply those rules of stuff on the water. So we even using the blue from on the water, we put, you know, those beam of light hitting the floor, uh, you know, and, and this is it. Basically, you know, we, uh, you know, we showed that to the company, to the directors, and they really liked it. You know, they felt like, yeah, this is, you know, if it's right, you know, it's colorful, you know, we have that Oz, well of Oz feeling, you know, nonetheless, you know, something can happen that can be pretty, you know, pretty, uh, pretty mysterious here, you know. Um, and then, you know, you just work and roll after that, you know, we did the color keys on top, you know, using the same rules, you know, we put references on the bottom using some Fresetta, Swamp, that image that was cracking the code of what we needed for, you know, references for the skin color as well. So we looked at a lot of live action movie for that, by the way. Here, yeah, I don't want to go, you know, this is where the, the, all the meat, you know, happened and this is where you need people who can do stuff like that as well, it's all the breakdown. You know, I'm not going to talk about that because this is more like the production after you enter a different realm, which is making the, the, the movie happening. And you guys are familiar with that. I mean, a lot of you are working in animation. So, you know, you know that you model, you surface, you know, you do all of that stuff, you know. Cool. And then, you know, you can create plants, you know, using those same attributes. Bam. Cool. Cool. So this is it for the, for crude. Cool. How long do I have again? Five? Yeah, about five, ten minutes. Five, ten minutes. Okay, cool. So I have time to show you something. Question, though, on the style guide or anything or crudes? Yeah. Yeah, we always, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, we always, we always take a lot of influences and references for. In a, in a negative way, like, um, that people might suggest that reminds them of this or that. So they, you mean they impose, like, they tell me, you know, we would like to, that the movie looks like that, for example, yeah. or? Yeah, it might happen. Yeah, and the directors have, uh, my directors, you know, Chris Anders and Kirk D'Amico have a uh, strange taste <laughs> in movies. They always refer movies that I barely know, or that from the 80s, you know, like those B movies that were really crappy, you know, but this is what they like, you know, and so whatever, that's their taste. You know. So yeah, yeah, we do deal with uh, different, you know, obligations. Other question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they done first or afterwards? Who matches whose lighting? Who matches whose? Yeah. Color? So Doug would be the, the 
the right person to answer that question. But yeah, we definitely, you know, I work tightly with the matte painting department. Nowadays, basically, we're using some software so that we actually model the, the matte painting, you know, so we have a, because it has to work for the 3D glasses as well, you know, so we basically transfer the painting on, into the model. So it's like a tapestry that you map into it, you know. I usually do the color keys, you know, for, to make sure that what they're going to paint is accurate to the color key. Um, and uh, then I work tight with them and we paint the background, we map it into the, the 3D model. So I, that's too bad I didn't take, but I had like something really cool, like a gimmick, you know, of how we work with my painting, which is absolutely awesome. I might have it on my, uh, somewhere, but, so yeah, we do work with them, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It depends. You know, every production designer works differently. Me, for me, you know, it's really important to be consistent, you know, and to make sure that character design are done at the same time as background. Like, none of them take the lead, you know, because I, I hate when I feel like the character designer first have been designed by different people. So I'm always hiring just one guy, usually. And then, if they don't fit into the environment, I feel like it's, it doesn't work, it's corky. You know. Yeah, so uh, for me, you know, they have to be designed at the same time, you know. That's a good question, and that can lead him maybe to the second thing. Yeah, it, yeah, it does change the color script. So, by the way, um, and I work with Doug on B-Movie. Um, the color script is great. Those rules are great. You know, what, what you put at the beginning is great. It can actually backfire at you. You know, so for example, if, you're, if, you're, if your, color, your color script is really tight and, you know, you're really happy with it, you're really proud, you know, you like, I put the blue and after I put the yellow and... But if that stuff change, then, then it's, it's, you know, you fucked. I mean, it's, it excludes your, your, your philosophy and everything. So I learned that I'm actually, you know, I'm tight at the beginning, but I'm, I'm not really into Carlos Creed for sake, unless it's really part of the movie, which it is for Kung Fu Panda, and that's what I wanted to show you, you know, after, you know. Um, but for example, I'm talking about B-movie because the rules that I apply for B-movie backfire at me, big time. And I learned my lesson here, you know. Uh, what happened is, uh, you know, Again, I learned, you know, at school, I learned through, you know, Bruce Block, who's like the master cinematographer, you know, give us classes and everything that, you know, you need to build your Bible, you know, really well and all your rules. And I'm, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing it. So for B movie, for example, the world of the bees was really orange, yellow, inviting, warm color, you know, blah, blah, blah. The world of the humans was it has to fly to at one point and meet Vanessa and, you know, it's a different world from way, for where he's from. Therefore, we're going to use a lot of blues greens, glasses, you know, cold materials, you know, uh, asphalt, you know, cars, blah, 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 you know, like uh, all the materials that you don't want, you don't, you want to contrast with the B-movie. Simple rule, you know, in theory, it's working. Perfect. What happened is, you know, they write the story and I built my Bible and the story changes tremendously. And then we spend maybe, what, 10% of the movie into the, into the beehive. You know, so all, everything I invented, everything that I felt cozy, where I wanted to be basically in the show was the beehive, you know, because it was all about cozy and light and, you know, we stayed 10% of the movie inside, you know, then the 90% of it, you know, you're in the green, blues, glass, metal, you know, it's everything I didn't want to be basically, you know, it's just because the story changes and I'm a victim of that, you know, and that rules was so tight that I couldn't even back up from it, you know, so the movie at the end felt pretty cold for me, you know, actually, just because of that, that thing. So I would have been, I should have been more flexible, even, you know, for example, with that, or maybe I shouldn't have put all of my assets into that rules, you know, and find a different set of rules. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it's a blurry line. You know, definitely, uh, I don't know, I mean, like you have a... Well, for Cruise, it was particular, by the way. For Cruise, I, you know, I, I was a bit cocky and I uh, basically asked permission to the producer to give me about three months of, I mean, three months of blue sky to explore things, you know. And I got that permission, you know, so I was able to create an environment and to take the lead on that, not, not really regarding the script, you know, so that was a treat, doesn't happen too often, like I'm on Crudes 2 right now, just started a month ago and I'm already 
to the script. Like I don't have time, you know, the, the production is really tight. So I can't allow myself, you know, to, to spend any time. But the look is pretty much, you know, under control. So it's, it's not as bad. But to answer your question, I mean, Kendall, you can also, you know, uh, participate. But I don't know, a year, year and a half about that, you know. But it's a constant. Uh, again, you know, you come back to the drawing board, as you can see. You know, it's not like suddenly the, the, the door of the art department closes and you can come back. You know, so we do a lot of back and forth. That's why it's good that it's, everything is happening in one studio. Because, you know, you climb the stairs, you know, constantly. <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah, uh, other question? Not. Okay. You guys know everything. <laughs> cool. And, you know, so I'm going to I have a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk to you today. But, you know, talking about color, since it was a good se segue, you know, Kung Fu Panda, and uh, I can talk about it for a while. I mean, I, uh, I started on Kung Fu Panda. I was one of the first artists on it then moved to B-Movie. So what I'm going to talk about, by the way, are not my stuff. You know, the stuff that has been done by the production designer afterwards. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be really brief. But um, why the movie worked that well, I, I feel, was because they did their homework, you know, on Kung Fu Panda. They went to China and, you know, the state, you know, there's nobody from America, so I can say it. Uh, they have a tendency to be irrelevant sometimes to the culture and to to talk about the cliche instead of talking the actual about the actual culture, you know, it's what they've heard about, you know. But for you know, for this one particularly, then you know, they went they went to town, and uh, you know, so they looked at a lot of references. They went to China. They checked stuff. They wrote, you know, decorative element, for example, um, about the philosophy of dragons. You know, you know, they learned, for example, that the dragon over there is a, uh, there's a different philosophy of dragon in the Orient than the Occident. You know, over there, for example, it's a symbol of, um, it's the combination of, uh, of the bird. So the bird, you know, represents um, the future, I mean, flying high, the future, the dream, you know, not being terrestrial. And, the and you combine the, the, f the, the bird with the, the snake. So the snake is the ground, is the pra pragmatic world, is the present, you know, it's everything that's grounding you to the earth. So the combination of earth and sky basically is what the dragon is all about, you know. So it's the, the, the balance of universe, you know, the combination of, of those two. Something cool to know, you know, when you start a production like that. Um, and this, is, this chapter, and you don't see too much about it, but that's really important. It was about colors. So colors for Kung Fu Panda was really crucial and really important. And they studied it carefully, meaning that, for example, red, the red color in China is a different representation than what we know. I mean, the symbol of red, you know, for us. Um, so red in China is a, is a, is a powerful color, is the color for um, marriage. You know, in the Occident, you know, red is the color of death. Okay? The white is the color of a uh, wedding for us in Occident. It, it is color of death for them in, in China, if I, if I can translate that properly. Uh, again, those rules were really different. So part of the exposition, you know, we're back in the exposition here where you better sell those rules right at the beginning. And you don't even have to really pay attention too much about it when you look at the movie. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's in conscience, you know, it's on, but you feel if it's well done, you feel it basically. You know, they did research, you know, for the style, you know, but that's not what I want to talk about. And so they do the style, the color, the color script. Therefore, the color script here is really important. Meaning that, and I think I have a, I have a laser, haha. <laughs> the, so for Kung Fu Panda, Po is actually looking for the excellence. You know, he wants to be the, the, the excellent, like the perfect, you know, student. And the color gold is the color for excellency in, in, in Asia, you know, in China at least, you know. So gold is the color of Po. Every time you see Po, you see gold around. Okay. Thailand is a is a, a snow leopard, you know. Um, he lives in the, in the ice. Blue is the color of Thailand. Every time you're with Thailand, you, you know, you have blue around, okay? When you escape from the, from the, from the grot, from the cave, you know, the, the red is actually the good color here. Again, you know, the red is a good color in China. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a fight, you know, against blue and red. Um, when Thailand escape, you know, the, the, the blue takes over. So at the beginning, you have a lot of red, and then little by little, the, 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 the blue takes over. Um, Green is the color of wisdom. You know, this is the color of Shifu, the master. Every time you see Shifu, it is in green environment. Really basic stuff, but then that helps. 
you know, that really map your movie you know, properly. Um, so yeah, every time you see, you know, here, there's a combat between Thailand and, and Shifu. Every time you see gold, this is training for, for, for the panda, it's gold. Okay, really cool. Green, color of Shifu, the Jade Palace, this is color. Gold, color of Po. The shadow of Shifu is green, this is color. I mean, it's very really basic, I mean, as you can see, like, it's really graphic, actually. Thailand, Thailand escape, you know, it takes over, you know, and is ready to, for battle, you know, everything is blue. The, the menace is coming, you know, everything is blue. The villagers learn that uh, Thailand is coming to town, you know. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Okay, what do they do? They take the light away. The light is orange, you know. So they take the hop away, you know. So there was a lot of orange at the beginning because they're all holding a lamp, you know, like, and they escape the village, they're scared of Thailand. So, you know, they, they go away and little by little, orange. That means Thailand is coming menacing and is actually really strong, you know. The battle between Po and Thailand. Po is gold, there's more blue at the beginning, you know. Uh, Thailand is definitely like a, the strong character in the show. Po is not as strong, but you know, find his way to fight. You know, therefore the gold, little by little, takes over the blue. And this is the end of the show. There's no more blue at all. You know, so the blue Thailand has been defeated, and the, the leftover is the gold color, which is excellency, meaning that you know Po successfully become the best student or whatever, you know. So it's brilliant. I mean, you know, they, you know, they, they, they went to town, they did the homework, you know, they studied the color, they did it, and they stick to it, you know, which is great. You know. So that was a good lesson of something that works, and you can see it, you can feel it, you know. When a movie works like that, actually, you know, it's not the only reason, you know, the story is brilliant. Nonetheless, you know, that has been really, really properly done. So congratulations to the production design on that show. Cool, okay, so that concludes. Uh, my part, you have another eight hours to go, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>